some of these services are um, not mandatory, and I think you know you've heard a lot that there are a lot of mandated services within the budget. Um, but clearly, some of these things are things that are useful both to well, either to keep local property taxes low or to really help fill gaps in our systems. And adult literacy certainly does that. On the higher education side, um, really what we saw was an unprecedented decimation of um, funding for institutions in higher, uh, higher education. Uh, the state system, the 14 colleges of the, the, um, of the state system of higher education sustained a 50% cut, about $230 million. Penn State was cut by 51%. They've already talked about closing some of the smaller satellite campuses. Um, community colleges have a cut of about 10%. Did you hear a little bit more about that later on? That's, that's just in their funding line. Community colleges also deliver a lot of services. Um, are funded through the Department of Labor and Industry, DCED, and then those programs have also sustained cuts. Um, state related, Pitt, Lincoln, and Temple have a 52% cut, and the FIA program is cut by almost 7% partly in grants to students and partly in institutional grants. And again, we've seen via cuts over the past couple of years. Um, so some of this is really, you know, an interesting um, reduction in programs that are very important to middle class families in Pennsylvania. Uh, we know that Pennsylvania is an old state. We still are third when it comes to the <laughs> share of our population that are senior citizens. Uh, but we also have a sizable school um, 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 school age population, and in order to grow, um, we need to have families and families who have children. If you look at some of this, the growing states, uh, many of them are growing because they um, are attracting families and people are staying there and having children. And certainly, these types of pro these types of cuts. Um, really give an impression that the needs of those families are not well understood or, or, or well respected in, in the budget. Okay, now we get to the Department of Public Welfare, and um, I'm gonna go through this one really quickly because there's a lot in here. Um, welfare and cash assistance. Uh, you've, we've heard a lot over the past two years about waste, fraud, and abuse in the Department of Public Welfare, and it is not a uh, surprise that within within DPW, the big, some of the, the larger cuts at the moment are on the welfare and cash assistance side. Um, and again, the number of adults who receive cash assistance in Pennsylvania would not even fill up the stadium at Penn State. I mean, the, the welfare rolls have declined so dramatically uh, since their peak in 1996. We've seen a small <coughs> uptick um, during the recession, but uh, clearly there's been a real restraint on the growth and, and cash assistance programs. Um, nonetheless, there are some significant cuts, and most of those are related to the employment and training programs. Uh, there are three different lines that include employment and training for, for people who will receive a cash assistance to help them get off welfare and develop skills so they can become self-sufficient. And those are cut right now. That might need a retooling of those programs, and I think that Secretary Alexander, when he talked in his, um, in, in his budget briefing, talked about uh, the <coughs> desire to change some of the outcomes in, uh, in some of those programs. On the supplemental side, we know that the supplemental security payments to very low-income seniors and um, people with disabilities and um, visually impaired people were cut a couple of years ago. Um, and because of all the good work people did, they're not cut again, but that program is basically level funded with a small amount of, of an increase uh, um, to reflect the, the enrollment. And we're going to hear a lot about the DPW budget and how the DPW budget and the health, care, the health budget line items increased. And it's very important to understand that what this budget does is take tobacco settlement dollars that were in a separate portion of the budget that no one ever looked at um, and counted them, moved them into the general fund, and now count them as general fund dollars. The tobacco settlement. Um, was passed, the legislation was passed in 2001. It very clearly prescribed the use of the dollars from the master settlement agreement that Pennsylvania is getting.
getting for a variety of purposes, including about 30% to adult health insurance. Um, what this budget does is to propose to change that completely to, to eliminate the tobacco settlement as a dedicated fund, move those dollars and programs into the general fund. So much of the increase in the public welfare budget is related to the fact that those dollars are being counted as, um, as general fund dollars this year. And we've seen that in the Medical Assistance for Workers Dis with Disabilities Program. That program is expected to grow again this year, which is good since many of the people who, um, who have lost their adult basic coverage um, might be able to find some, um, uh, be eligible for, for MAUD. And it's also true in long-term care and some community-based services. Um, similarly, in the health department, about $74 million was moved over, and that certainly funded the, the increase in the health department. So what we, what was announced, but what we have not heard very much about yet is a desire for cost savings within the Department of Public Welfare. And there are a number of new initiatives that are sprinkled through there. We don't have a lot of details <coughs> about what these are. Oops, I'm on the wrong one. You want to go back? No DPW cost savings? There it is. All right. Um, it's OK. <laughs> um, Institutionalization, I hope I spelled it right at midnight, of um, services and rebalancing. From what I can glean, rebalancing, uh, uh, what rebalancing of long-term living services used to mean and what it means today may not be the same thing. So it's going to be really important to think about and hear the use of language and what kind of, of programs and initiatives will be um, created. Uh, in rebalancing, there's a talk about moving people out of um, institutional type of care, and that's you know, also, uh, or, or involvement with public institutions, and that might be child welfare, it might be a number of other things. Um, more effective care management, some of that is may mean, um, um, is, is, has been discussed to mean um, better coordination, some of it has been discussed to mean reduced access to certain benefits. Uh, program integrity, you know, we've heard about anywhere from 400 million to $2 billion in fraud and abuse in the welfare department. Now we have a number on that, it's $46.6 million. Nothing like what we have heard about the great degree of, of fraud and abuse in the Department of Public Welfare. Um, and then something called fair share payments. And there's a lot of, there's a lot incorporated into all of these various different things. Um, but part of that will be to look at the fees for participation in certain um, uh, DPW programs, and some of those might change. There's a lot of talk about sliding scale fees and things like that. Uh, the budget did acknowledge way down in one of the in one of the notes um, that within the medical assistance program there have been significant cost controls over the past years. And even as enrollment in medical assistance has increased, um, the cost per person within MA has not increased very much, and certainly not as much as the um, national average. And a lot of that has to do with utilization controls and changes in pharmacy and other things that occurred over the past number of years to try and um, rein in some of the areas, find some savings in DPW, and then help reallocate that to expanding services. I have no idea where we are. <laughs> so can you go, what happened to all my other slides? So let's go back to human services. There we go. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about all of human services. Um, there were cuts in a number of areas, the Human Services Development Fund, Flexible Fund for Counties Gone, cuts in attendant care, long-term living, child welfare, the hospital sustained cuts in about $150 million, most of it in supplemental payments that draw down federal matching dollars, so we could be looking at about 300 million or more um, in cuts to those programs. And then haircuts. Now this does not mean that they're cutting haircuts, um, but if uh, much of what's happened over, in, over the past couple of years, really in a lot of the mid-year cuts have been little point, you know, tenth of a percent, half a percent, one percent cuts 
5% cuts, sometimes even 10% cuts in various different programs. And a lot of that has continued in everything from domestic violence to legal services to a lot of other things. So there are a lot of programs that have small reductions. Okay, now we can go back to the scary looking man. There we go. So there has been a lot of buildup moving um, into this budget. I know that, that many of us have had our thoughts about what was going to come. And clearly, understanding the continued large budget deficit, understanding the governor's point of view about the need to reduce the size of government and his, his pledge not to increase <coughs> revenue of any kind, I think many of us were very worried about what was going to happen. Um, and frankly, when the budget came out, there was horror on some sides, and there was a palpable sense of relief on other sides. There are um, a number of areas where, frankly, I expected to see much larger cuts that didn't happen. Um, I thought that there would be one and a half or two billion dollars worth of cuts, but I didn't expect that to be so thoroughly focused on the education side of the budget. Um, but now we have a reality. We have a reality of the fact that within the framework of we're spending $27.3 billion, maybe $27.5 $5 billion, there's already a little bit of hedging on that number. Um, there's a billion dollars cut out of high, at basic education and a half a billion cut out of higher education and there's no new revenue. So if any of those cuts are going to be restored, where are the restorations going to come from? They're going to come from other services and programs. So this is not any time for any of us to sit back on our laurels. Um, we have, um, um, we're going to have some difficult days ahead. So.